Hey friends, Patrick here from the .NET Web Academy and today you saw the title. Let's talk about the lifecycle methods of Blazor. Maybe you already know them, but maybe you will also be surprised when you see how they actually work and what the result in the end of these main lifecycle methods is. So what we do for that is we create a Blazor web app. We call it Blazor lifecycle methods and a very important for this example here, I want to use an interactive render mode this time, so not Blazor SSR. I want to use WebAssembly because only with WebAssembly we are actually on the client and this means that we can also use the console of the browser to see our, well, console write line statements. Otherwise we would have to use the terminal. No big problem actually, but uh, Let's use the browser so we see everything at once. And if you hear some noises in the background, this is my little baby girl who is, well, almost not a baby anymore. But anyways, she's loud and getting louder, but it's fun. It's really fun. Okay, let's create this project. Hey friends, real quick, when you check out the screen here, you see that only 25% of you are actually subscribed to my channel. And if you watched a couple of my videos and really learned something, then it would really mean the world to me if you could just hit the subscribe button. It is free, it would help me creating more and more videos like the one you're currently watching. So if you wanna learn something, support me for free then please take the time click that subscribe button thank you so much and now let's continue with the tutorial and now here what I want to do is I want to use the counter page here the example components provided by this template of the blazer web app to check out all the lifecycle methods there's one a quick fix let's say that I want to add here and this is the actual render mode. If we do it like that, maybe you saw it in another of my videos, we actually call this component or render this component twice, one or first on the server and then also on the client. So this is the magic of uh, pre-rendering. To disable that, we create a new instance of the uh, render mode. So here is this would be a new interactive web assembly render mode and we add this flag here. So this means that the pre-rendering is set to false and Visual Studio doesn't want to show me that it's actually the pre-render flag, maybe like that, nope. Anyways, so here now this is only rendered on the client. So really no um, output on the terminal. We don't have to worry about the server at all. This way we only do everything and render everything on the client. Now regarding the first lifecycle method, this would be the on initialized. And I think you already know this thing. And this is really the most straightforward one where we can simply override it on initialized and also the async uh, version of this method and here let me just write console write line on initialized is called and the current count is current count and of course we are using a string interpolation here so let's add our dollar sign and let's also add the async one so we see the order of these methods so this would then be async task on initialized async the name like that and let's also call the base methods here and now let's just run this and check out the console all right there we are control shift and i for the console there we are counter and as you can see on initialized is called and we see on initialized async is called as well. I can click here. This is also why we need the interactivity. Otherwise we would have to use a form for instance to make this work, meaning see the effect of the click me button here with Blazor SSR. But with Blazor WebAssembly, we have interactivity. We're using WebAssembly here, no web sockets like in Blazor server. I know that's a lot, but still I think you need to know this if you are a beginner. And on initialized again, pretty straightforward. Only when this component is opened when we access this thing it is rendered then we see what is going on in the uninitialized methods now the next one already is on parameters set and as the name implies you may want to call this method when you're doing something with parameters but there is well not really a trap to it but something that maybe not everybody knows because what we can do now is we can say that this thing here the current count 
is actually a parameter. So let's say this is a parameter, right? Let's make this public and add a getter and the setter. So get set and maybe, so everything's correct. We now call this thing a current count with a capital C. And now what we can do is we can say that this thing gets a parameter. For instance, current count, which is an integer. Let's restart the app again. This route is not available anymore, but now let's just say counter two. And what we can see here now is that already with the uninitialized method, we see the, the value of the current count. This is a parameter, right? So maybe you thought, I was thinking that at the beginning, actually that on parameter set really is needed if you are using a parameter whatsoever. If you're using the address bar here, the route, right, to set this parameter, or if you're setting it later. Now let's just have a look at the on parameter set. So protect it, override, and then on parameter set. Now here, let's just do the same exact thing. But this time, of course, it's on parameters set is called current count value. And again, the uh, async part. So here now, on parameter set async task async, and here we want to call on parameter set async. Same thing here. All right. So now, when we run this one more time, we see the following: uninitialized is called, uninitialized async, then on parameter set, and after that, on parameter set async. So the direction is clear, right? Or the order, let's say first on initialized and then on parameter set. Now what happens if I click this button and the actual parameter value changes? Well, nothing. So on initialized is not called, on parameters set is not called, and what may be called is the third method, the on after render. But let's stick to the on parameter set for a minute. So here now, if you want to see an effect and if you want to uh, see when this method really makes sense, then we have to create another component and that then would be a child of this counter component. So let me do that real quick. We add a new eraser component and this is now our counter child. All right, and now here, let me actually just move everything here so this is now not a page. This is really only a component, which is the actual counter. And this thing still has the parameter. And now in our parent component, we open, or we, not we open, we use this counter child component and set the parameter there. All right, so let's, let's, let's have a look. We remove first the parameter here in the URL, and then we just call counter child and the parameter in this case let's just set this to 10 like that and now restart the application again there we are wrong route of course and now we have the counter and this is of course a not so smart typo here current count restart the application and same result right and i can click here still nothing is happening but what if we add another button in the parent component and the parameter in the parent component changes so that the value of the parameters also changed then in the child component? Let's just have a look. So back to Visual Studio here, and I wanna add another button. So here now we have the click me button of the child, let's say, all right, and now here, Let's copy this code and we can uh, do a little recap, of course, after that. So here now I have pretty much the same button, but this is now the parent. And let me uh, rename this as well. So this is now the parent count. And we are using this thing now here, all right? And let me, let me, let me remove this. So this is really just a member here or a field here. So this is now called parent count, no parameter in uh, the actual parent component, but the parameter that you want to use is then of the child component. 
So again, we have a similar con construct here actually. We have a button to increment the counter and we're using then this value as a parameter in the counter child component. And here again, pretty much the same thing, but we are then only calling the on initialized par on parameter set and in a minute the on after render methods of the counter child component. So let's restart the application one more time. What we see now here that it starts with a zero. So far so good, we can click here, it is increased, but what if I click this now? It's back to one because this is not the parent count value, right? And you can see now here in uh, the in the console, maybe we can make this a little bit bigger, that we are really calling the on parameter set method. So this is not the big difference really. And I know this was a bit long maybe, but especially for beginners, I think this is important to know that this is the difference between using the on parameter set in one component and having the having the relationship between a parent and the child component, for instance, then when you change the parameter, then this thing is really called and you can see this here in the console. And I think this is, again, a very, very important point to make. All right, and now the last one of the main methods, let's say, and this is the on after render. And there's one, well, one flag you have to consider here. So protected overrides on after render and you can now already see it here bool first render what is that so when your component is called let me just copy this again because i'm a lazy coder here so if first render if it's the first render of this component then we call this so here it's on after render is called yeah we can also display the current count and then here also add first render all right and then after the first render we got well other render scenarios let's say and same thing again for the async one so here on after render async task async and that's it almost okay so now we have on initialized the async one on parameter set async and then on after render and now we restart the application for maybe a last time. And then we see that we got on initialized, on initialized async, on parameter set, and then on after render, the first render, and then on after render other times. So for instance, if I click here, I see on after render is called again, not the first well, first render is false in this case, right? So here you see that we have this change. When I click the button of the child, the component is rendered again. Now the parent component, when I click this thing, what we then see is that maybe we can uh, remove everything and then here click there. And now you see on param parameter set is called. And then after that also on after render because we also have to render this again and again and again but only the first time we access the component, we don't have to refresh the whole page. We can just go back and uh, then return to the, or go to home and then return to the counter page. Then we see that we also got the first render here. All right, now why do we need this? Sometimes it might be the case that you want to call something after everything is rendered, but only one time. Maybe some JavaScript stuff, for instance. I know we're using Blazor here, but sometimes you still have to do that. And maybe in the on after render, this might make sense. All right, but only one time and not every single time you re-render re this component. And for that case, then the on after render makes sense. All right, we've got other lifecycle components. You can see that in the documentation, like the set parameters um, method or the dispose methods, dispose is in the end, cleaning up the component if it's destroyed. But maybe this is a bit too deep for now. If you want that, then please write it down in the comments. Then I'm happy to add videos about these component, uh, these uh, methods as well. But I think these are the most important ones on initialized, on parameter set and on after render. Quick roundup maybe what these are and how they behave in the end and really be careful when you're using the on parameter set and something's not working as expected. Maybe it's because how you set the parameters or how the uh, components are related to each other. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If so, 
don't forget to hit the like button and maybe even hit the subscribe button. This would really help. And maybe if you want, check out the .NET Web Academy for even more Blazor and .NET stuff. Again, thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.